I come from many years of experience working in the, the world of domestic violence and sexual assault advocacy. What I found in the kind of provider world is that we talked a lot about survivor-centeredness and we genuinely believed in it, but that what we offered was very limited options for survivors. And a lot of survivors did not want what we offered. For example, if we look at domestic violence, they didn't want to go to shelter. They didn't want to call the police. Um, they didn't want to be separated from homes. Um, many times what they wanted was to stop violence in a relationship, but perhaps stay in that relationship, or to leave the relationship, but to leave safely. Um, and so uh, one of the ways I came to doing the work of transformative justice or community accountability is really coming to understand in a very deep way that so many people in my community um, through my work and my own life did not want the options that we were calling survivor-centered and that we really, really needed to um, think differently about what that meant in terms of how we approached um, uh, intervening in violence but also preventing violence. So I'd say that one of the ways in which um, in the work that we did at Creative Interventions that we first questioned that was to really um, deepen the process through which we asked survivors what they wanted. And that seeing that people, and many of us are this way, in a moment of crisis, or when you think your only option might be to call the police or to go to a shelter, even if you didn't want to do those things, might think, uh, how do I make those types of options fit? How do I make the police respond in a, um, you know, in a more immediate way, for example? But what I have found, I think many of us have found, is if you actually ask people, what kind of world do you want to live in? What, what kind of responses would you really want to the violence that you have experienced? What would you want for other people in your position? They will come up with other kinds of things. It might take them a while, but um, a lot of what we do, and I think a lot of what we do in this work, is we give people space. And we give people space to imagine what they really want, even if they think it might be impossible. And what you find is when people really imagine what they really want, we start thinking creatively about how you might actually be able to build those things. You might actually even be able to get them in your immediate world with a little bit of thought, a little bit of organizing, with a little bit of community coming together in a different way. Or at least we can think of ways in which maybe we're not going to get that, but we, ways in which we can change things so that other people will be able to in the future. I think that's been a really important part of this work and a, an important part of um, expanding what we think survivor-centered means. The reality is most people don't use uh, the criminal legal system. Most people do not go to the police. Most people do not go to external resources um, for a whole variety of reasons, and big reasons are because um, people are often coming from marginalized and criminalized communities. And also, people, what people really want is to be able to address it within whatever group of people it's happening, you know, within their family, within their uh, school, within their friendship networks, within their religious, whatever, whatever the situation is. People always ask me, what about the rapists, you know, and what about the murderers? And, um, and I really get that, why that question comes up. And I also get the feeling of despair and rage and upset because, uh, because of our own experiences and what we see in the world. And I also think that a lot of times when people say that, they aren't thinking about what does justice really look like for people. Like I think about like, well, what does justice look like for me as a child sexual abuse survivor? Was justice put? Would justice have been putting my father in prison? Would not that he would? I don't know if he would ever been put in prison, but you know, um, or you know, like if that would even work. But what what is what? Do, what do we need? What what do survivors need? What do those impacted really need? What would justice really look like? And I think when we really ask those questions and have the space to ask those questions, I'm not sure that. Um, most people would say they want incarceration. Even, you know, there's so many people who've had egregious harms against them and they still didn't necessarily, incarceration and that whole legal process 
never feels like justice. It never feels like healing. It never feels like, you know, you could really move on from that, you know. So what would you need to feel like justice was done? And I think for a lot of survivors, it's like the people, if the people around them really believed them and cared for them and sat with them. And, you know, it's, it's also about the person who caused the harm, but it's also everybody around them. And so I think that that question, what does justice really, what would that look like for you or for anyone who's been harmed in that way? I think we don't ask that question. And also, I don't think incarceration, it's never gonna, it's not gonna change anyone. It's not gonna, it, there's no space for accountability. There's no space for really reconciling with the harm that you've caused. There's no process for you to really even have to face it. We're just so steeped in a, a culture of crime and punishment. And so part of supporting accountability is also being able to have a uh, connection long enough to actually, uh, and building enough amongst groups of people to actually foster the idea that, no, what real justice might look like is actually uh, creating space for uh, survivors to have agency in, around what actually happens uh, to the person that caused harm, for survivors to have space for healing, right? To have space um, uh, to be safe and for the people that caused harm to actually have to do those steps of accountability, have to do those steps of actually owning up to what, what you've done, owning up to uh, the actions that need to be taken in order to make things as right as possible, um, and then transforming yourself. Most people, really what we want if we've survived harm is for somebody to acknowledge that harm was done to make some kind of commitment to transforming their behavior and to give some assurance that they will not harm anybody again, right? And um, that takes a lot of work and that takes a lot of um, commitment and that takes a lot of labor. And it, it calls for fundamental transformation for a lot of people. And so I don't think it's fair to say it's you know prison or it's nothing. I think it's prison or it's transformation. And it's like, I would really prefer to see human beings have the opportunity to transform themselves. Yeah.